Hello, I'm Kyle Peacock, and I'm a front-end engineer on Dfinity's Developer Experience team. In this talk, I'll be going over how to build a front-end application on the internet computer. I'll start by creating a application using Gatsby.js, which is a React framework. Turn that into a generic static site, which we can then deploy to the internet computer. And then in part two of the talk, I will show how to build some application logic, add a backend service using Definity's Matoko language, and then connect the two so that you can have a full stack application that runs entirely on the internet computer using decentralized services and smart contracts. To begin, let's walk through the steps of how to deploy a simple front-end website to the internet computer. I'll start by using the default Gatsby starter, which is a React framework that builds to static HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Then I can add a file to my folder, name it dfx.json, and configure it to generate an asset canister, which will load the compiled Gatsby site. Now, by running dfx deploy, I can build an asset canister with our static website. You can see it here running on my development environment. Nice and simple. So the next step that I would like to have us go through is to show how to take an application that we can develop and make it talk with a backend canister from the front end. So this is where we go from deploying a static asset to the internet computer to now demonstrate how to make dynamic calls using the internet computer as your backend. In order to make this happen, we'll need to make a few changes. First, this whole application is not um, going to be the most complete. Um, and obviously, it's just branding for Gatsby. So thanks, Gatsby. We're going to move on from your application now. I'm pasting in an application that I've already written. It's basically going to be a uh, contact card. That's why we named this contact app. So it'll have a simple form where you can upload some information. And you can persist that information, obviously, in a number of different ways. If you're doing a prototype, you might want to store that information in local storage if you want it between sessions. Uh, you might also reach to another tool, such as Firebase or uh, a MongoDB Atlas instance. Here, we'll be using a simple uh, Matoko canister that will have a key value store for us. So to configure that, we're going to add a backend folder to our source directory. And we'll name this contact app. Inside of this folder, we'll add our main.matoko file. And here, I also have a pre-written snippet of code, but it's pretty simple, so we can walk through it here. Matoko allows us to declare an actor. This is the basic model of Matoko, and it is our recommended model for interacting with the internet computer. That said, there are plenty of other ways that you can write besides Matoko, and we have uh, healthy Rust communities, uh, C uh, demos in C, and we expect that many more uh, 
languages will be supported over time as the communities attached to them. The only requirement is that your code compiles down to WebAssembly, which is what runs natively on our canisters. So here we have a stable of our entries. This represents um, the way that the code is persisted across upgrades. Uh, it's really an important and key feature of the internet computer that we can allow you to upgrade your contracts and your canisters without losing the information there. And then our store is an interface that will sit on top of our entries of a hash map. This should be a very familiar format for um, various languages. And it'll allow us to have a nice set API using the store.replace key value, a get query. And then we have two utility functions down here that are around persisting data during an upgrade. Now that we've added this main.motoko to our source directory. Now we need to update dfx.json to be aware about it. So we'll add a new canister here, contact app. And we'll just tell it main has an entry point of source slash backend. Pointing right there at our logic. So now we have our contact app, which is going to give us a very simple text-based key value store. And I'm going to use this interface in much the same way that you might use uh, local storage. Wrap any code that I've got, put it in a JSON encoded string, and write it to the backend. There's going to be a couple extra steps in order to get this up and running. So we've just done our dfx.json. Now we need to tell Gatsby how to interact with our new code that we're adding. So to gatsbyconfig.js, I'm going to add this proxy information. This will point to localhost 8000, which is where the DFX replica runs during local development. Let's go ahead and start that now. I start the local development replica by running dfx start, and I'll run this in the background. Now that dfx is running in the background, we can build our Matoko backend by running dfx deploy. This is going to read from our Matoko file, and it's going to do several things for us. It's going to create this dfx hidden folder with a bunch of cached information. And it's going to give us environment specific uh, information such as canister IDs, as well as generating uh, code based off of the types that we used inside of our Matoko file. That is going to give us information that we can then use for our assets canister. The candid file ends up looking like this. 
So we have a service that we've generated with a get method and a set method telling us about the information that it takes to interact with that. And then that turns into a custom file that we will sort of take from you and abstract into a nice interface that you can use in your code base. So because these files are here, we have a small configuration that we're going to do to extend the Webpack config. And we'll do that here with Gatsby node. This is platform specific, so I won't dwell on it too much. But that code will look like this. The key bits of information are that we are reading from dfx.json and using those values to create an alias of dfx generated. And then we're attaching that alias into our webpack config. And we're also covering for uh, a dependency that requires us to do this resolve pattern for the moment. So with Gatsby node configured, now we can go ahead and add to our source, a new file, actor.js. And this is where we will interface with the canister. So actor is fairly simple. It'll look something like this. So we start with this import, which we will need to install. And then we'll also take advantage of the uh, new alias that we've just added. Next, we will go into add, initialize an HTTP agent. And pass that to our create actor factory. And this is all the information that we need to create our actor object. This actor will now be something that we can call using actor.get or actor.set. And it will return a promise that we can interact with to store and persist our value on the internet computer. The get call is going to make a query call, which should be quite fast. And the update call will probably take a few seconds in order to persist the information. Finally, we export our actor. From this file. Now to show how we can use this actor. Let's take a look at our main logic. So here in our application, we have a contact card. This is going to simply display the information. And here we have our index page. I'm importing the actor that we just wrote and then storing it. 
One note, just for anyone who's curious why I would do this instead of a traditional import, uh, is that Gatsby um, does server-side rendering. So this is just a way of delaying the import until it's needed. After that, we save the actor. And now we have logic for when we submit. We'll take all of the information out of our application. And then to store it, we call actor.set. And we pass in the card information, which is going to be a simple object. And then we clear our, do some cleanup. It's going to be very similar. Here we have a get card function where we call actor.get dot then returned card and then we'll set that into state and display it in the page. Very straightforward, uh, promise-based syntax, also friendly to async await. And let's see what that looks like now. And here we have our application. And just like that, we've uploaded that contact to the internet computer. Now I'm going to look up that information and do our get. Using the email address as a key. And with that speed, we've now got our contact. And that is an example of doing front end development on the internet computer. To deploy, we would simply do the same process as we did with the static, build all of the files, and then upload them to an ic0.app where we could use them on the public internet.